Okay, so before we do anything that starts to give a contour to this, the last thing we want to lay out is the dimensioning for our grommets. So what I always do to find even spacing is I will take a piece of tape and I will lay it to the edge of my perimeter where I want my grommets to uh, begin and terminate. So that is slightly inset from your border here. So there's a line for the interior border of our emboss and then another line here. So we're just going to take that and trim it with our scissors. And in order to get a sense of symmetry, we'll just peel it back, right? And we're going to fold it in half and we make an index of where half is. And then we're going to fold it in half again and index and fold it in half again on the other side and index. So you could decide to do your holes one inch apart um, and that's your standard spacing or you can decide that you want your holes to be proportionate to one another meaning that as you go to do this step you get a better sense of really where all of all of the holes spread out uniformly over the arbitrary length that we've determined, right? Because we don't know if this is an inch, we don't know if this is a quarter inch, we don't know if it's an eighth of an inch. We just know that as we start folding it down incrementally, each crease is the same proportion, right? So if we look at the number of holes we have, it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And depending on how your armor is designed, it's your decision as to whether or not you want this many holes tying your, your bracer together or less. And anytime you subdivide the tape, that's going to give you an indicator of I'd like a little more or I'd like a little less. Okay. So the nice part about this is once you have your tape on there, it's very easy for you to just... Make sure your Sharpie comes right up to the edge. And then take the time to just make a little mark, right? I'm doing this with the end of my paintbrush, just on the tape. And that gives you an idea of where your grommet spacing could go if you chose, okay? Now for me, I generally try and leave these radiuses where the design starts to curve around. I leave those open and I don't want to put um, grommet holes in those. So I'm only going to use the indicators that are just the Sharpie mark for my final holes. Now what I may do is incorporate those holes as rivets later here and here because aesthetically I find that pleasing, but what I will not do is um, punch my grommet holes for positions on the end of the tape. So we're going to line that up again like so and then just mark with the paintbrush boop, boop, all the way down so that we know where we're going to put all our grommet holes. Okay, And that's important because we know we're not going to use this dot, we're not going to use that dot, but we are going to use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those dots. So as we peel that back, we want to make sure that when we're punching our holes, the holes in our punch are rotated to accommodate the grommet size. So we've got a, I believe this is a double lot, which is a 3 16 inch grommet hole. So that's going to mate up quite nicely with um, this hole punch right here. So we need to rotate that into position. And as always, if you're punching a hole, get a piece of scrap leather and just do a test piece, right? You don't know whether or not it's gonna behave the way you think. Is it gonna be bigger? Is it gonna be smaller? And so you wanna take the time and say, can I fit this through? and it fits quite nicely. You can see I just pushed that in 
and it pops right out. Okay, so that's going to make our grommeting process go extra fast. So now all we have to do is find our holes, right? And then take the time to make sure that we're lined up over our dot. And then we will punch all of our holes so that we can lace up the bracer. Now, if you're inclined to, if you want something that's um, quicker to put on and to take off, buckles are always a good idea. I'm a big fan of buckles. But depending on how you do the lacing for your grommets, it can be much more comfortable. So if you're planning on wearing this armor all day, um, I gotta say the grommeting gives you a more form-fitting fit and it's more flexible when you're moving. The buckles you'll find are going to wear certain parts of your forearm more. So if you're jogging, if you're screaming, if you're waving, items in the air, um, you're going to notice the difference between having the grommets like low profile, gently rubbing against your entire arm versus the, <laughs> the buckles, which are going to wear through and you'll probably get a blister. Um, but it's easier to get in and out of the buckles. It doesn't take as long, but you're also not going to be wearing it for as long. So ultimately you have to ask yourself the question of like what do I intend to do with this armor is this just for show is this for cosplay is this um, you know part of a, a reenactment are you doing some renaissance fair work are you gonna be sweating are you gonna be jogging are you gonna be standing still is this just a photo shoot thing and those are all things I think of when I design my armor um, for myself or others what exactly they intend to be doing in this armor so you just work your way through, and um, if your leather is stiff, it's going to take some squeezing. Your forearms will be tired, but you can do it. Just take your time and work your way through each hole. So once you have all of them, that last one always gives you trouble because you get overconfident. Sorry, I get overconfident. Try that one more time. Oh, it just does not want to go. There we go. Always listen for that satisfactory click. Okay, so now we have, count them again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we know we have all the holes we need. Now we can wet our bracer and do our pre-shaping. The last thing you want to consider is is there anything else you want to do in terms of hole layout for the perimeter? Um, for me, I'm inclined to put small rivets, little um, nickel plated rivets on this perimeter because I think the aesthetic would be nice. That would be easier to lay out while it's flat. Um, however, Based on the curve radius and the rolling, it may be something that you want to do after your shaping because once you punch the holes, you're committed to doing the riveting step. And you may decide that aesthetically that's not what you want once you get it into the shape. So it's okay to punch your holes later. Just know that if you already know that's an aesthetic you want, um, you can punch them now.